Uh, why don't we go around the virtual table and have everybody introduce themselves? Starting with Larry. Sure, uh, Larry Carr, board member with the chamber. Armando. Armando Garcia, board member with the chamber. And Nick. Or we can go on to Steve. <laughs> Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Steve Patondo, Morgan Hill Schools. And Tracy. Tracy Roshanga, investment manager for the Northern California Carpenters. Okay, Edith. Good morning again, Edith Ramirez, assistant city manager for development services, city of Morgan Hill. Brittany. Good morning, everyone. Brittany Sherman, CEO president for the Morgan Hill Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for being here. And John. Hi, good morning. John Lang, economic development manager for the city of Morgan Hill. And I think we skipped Nick. And then David. Uh, David Crawford with RMW Architecture and Interiors. Uh, uh, here to uh, talk about the uh, Carpenters Training Center on the drone. Great. And uh, I work with Tracy. Okay, so today we have uh, David and Tracy that'll talk about the Carpenters Union relocation and expansion. Uh, then I think we're going to have an update from the city of Morgan Hill with a little bit of an extended discussion of, about the economic blueprint. Uh, then we'll hear also from the Planning Commission, if we have any Planning Commission folks here, uh, and then an update from Morgan Hill Unified School District. So David and Tracy, take it away. All right. Um, if uh, Brittany can bring up the, the aerial. Um, I, I also have it too, Brittany. If you... Okay, give me one second real quick because I just had it and then I had to put us live on Facebook, so. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a, a few different uh, visuals. Uh, the Carpenters Training Center is a uh, is a replacement uh, training center. Uh, the Carpenters uh, operate a training center in the Madrone neighborhood, and uh, they have outgrown it. And so uh, there was a, a search for a site uh, in Morgan Hill that uh, took a, probably a couple of years. Uh, we looked at a variety of say, sites. Um, and we were uh, well on the way on one site um, before that site had to be abandoned uh, due to some uh, um, uh, lead in the soil from uh, being a, a former uh, shooting range. Um, but luckily enough, uh, not far away from that site uh, was the site at 18 uh, 640 Madrone. Um, and after uh, due diligence on the environmental, uh, it was determined that it was uh, out of the, the affected zone of the old uh, um, uh, shooting range. And so um, the, the program for the training center is uh, there, it's a combination of classrooms and uh, shop areas and an outdoor uh, shop area, and there are some administrative offices. Um, so uh, there's also uh, eight classrooms. So there, there's a classroom environment where apprentices, uh, the, the usual schedule is classroom work in the morning, and then in the afternoon, they, they go into the shop areas and, and um, you know, work hands-on. And so that's the, that's the whole kind of uh, incentive behind the training centers is to get hands-on training with the tools and the materials of the trade. And um, this particular training center, uh, the emphasis is on um, carpentry 
and uh, drywall. And uh, it has a uh, uh, training um, uh, apprentices. Uh, the catch basin for apprentices is pretty large. Uh, apprentices come from as far away as 50 miles, I believe. And um, so uh, what is on the screen right now is what we presented to uh, the planning department for the architectural and site plan reuse of metal. So this was the entitlement package. Um, the building is a, a one story uh, building with a combination of office, classrooms, and shop areas. Um, and uh, it's 55,000 square feet. And uh, if we can just kind of scroll through, I'll, I'll quickly go through the, uh, we've got various uh, uh, rendered views of the, the building. Um, if you're familiar with that area, the site is right at the uh, a 90 degree turn. I call it the, uh, we're at the kneecap of Madrone. Um, and so the front uh, addresses that kneecap, uh, the, the turn with the, uh, the, the gray metal um, arch over the, the office area with this with the signage of the Carpenters Training Center. Um, the aerial view of V3, that gives you a pretty a good look at the, uh, if you were approaching from the drone. Uh, and V1 is a view from the parking lot. And uh, the west facade, V4 is uh, looking at the west facade, but, uh, and then, so this was the planning submittal. Uh, we're, we're parcel K on, on the map there. And uh, those were just uh, some street views uh, of Madrone as you uh, drive, you know, drive around the, the Madrone Parkway there. And I think if we move on, yeah. So this is the uh, site plan with the floor plan um, superimposed on it. Uh, you can see the, the, the kneecap there in uh, uh, Madrone Parkway. We have a main entry off of, off of Madrone on the west side. And, um, and then there's a secondary uh, on the, I guess, the south leg of, of Madrone uh, where we uh, share a, a shared access with the adjacent lot. Uh, but you can see in this view, uh, the classrooms are along the west facade and there's the administrative offices in the, um, we'll call it the southwest corner there. And along the back, there's a large shop area that includes a, uh, a 20 booth uh, welding shop that's in the, uh, the southeast corner and we have a fenced backyard, uh, which is used for surveying and layout. And along the north side, uh, the part of that yard is used for material storage. And uh, so we were able to utilize the site to uh, uh, obtain the required parking for the training room and also have uh, a nice uh, rear yard that's utilized for training. And then uh, you can keep going. Here's the enlarged floor plan. Um, the main entry, entry is on the bottom of the sheet there. Uh, you, you walk into the lobby. To the right would be uh, a service window. And behind that service window is admin. And to the left are the eight classrooms. And then if you continue going forward, you would enter into the shop areas. And uh, we can keep going on. And then these are the uh, exterior elevations. Um, this is a, a tilt up building. 
So this is a tilt up concrete. So these are uh, uh, fairly large panels that are cast on um, the floor slab. Uh, and the, the reveals and patterns uh, of the concrete are cast into the uh, exterior into the exterior side of the panel. Uh, the panels run probably like 30 feet wide. And um, I think we're about 25 feet tall to the parapet. And along the front, uh, around the offices and the main entry, uh, layered on top of the concrete panels are, um, we have um, uh, porcelain tile, which is, uh, that looks like uh, uh, wood. And we also have metal panel that forms the, the big gray arch. So there's a layering of materials to help enhance and um, make the, the building look attractive uh, from the street. That it's not just a concrete box, that there's, there's uh, more layers to it. And there's, there's really nice glass areas um, incorporated into the design. So there's a, a nice mix of, um, of materials. And uh, the way we treat the concrete, especially on the north elevation, um, the, the integration of the, the reveal lines, there's a lot of interest that coincides with uh, the mullions of the windows. So it's all, it all works together. And uh, uh, we can go to the, so these are kind of the, the, the back yard sides, uh, which are more utilitarian. They don't face the street. And I think that, and then there, I might have a, la a landscape plan. Uh, also, um, you know, a, a major um, uh, factor in designing the building is the landscaping. And uh, since there is, you know, a, a kind of large parking area, uh, there's the integration of, of the industrial park. There's the 30 foot wide, um, uh, existing landscaped uh, areas adjacent uh, on either side of a drone and uh, our landscape plan has uh, there's there'll be plenty of trees and um, uh, nice plantings along the drone to help enhance the, the building and uh, I have two other uh, there should be two other there's a aerial um, uh, rendering and a, a few renderings of the interior. And we can. I'm going to try to get to those real quick, David. Oh, okay. And I can, uh, if. If you'd like, uh, uh, I've, I've got the rendering up on my Okay, screen. sure, you thank want. you. Probably faster than me switching back and forth. Okay, uh, <laughs> share screen, host disabled, okay. And share screen, let's see. All right, can you see my screen? See, what do I have to do to uh, get that to click and share? I think uh, you might have a, a lock on only the host. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. All right, awesome. All right, so these, uh, these are some views. Uh, in the entry lobby area. Um, so uh, view number three in the lower left, uh, this would be as if you were just walking in to the lobby. Um, we have these uh, framed seating areas 
that will have uh, images uh, that the carpenters will select, uh, you know, depicting the work that goes on. Um, the upper right um, is the uh, is the view of the service window as you walk in, and uh, uh, view number one, the upper left, is also that. And then the the lower left is that's the view down the corridor to the classrooms. And uh, we should have one more sheet of. Uh, and here's these are views of the administration area. Um, we're uh, it's a this I, I have a feeling this is going to be a really nice office environment. Uh, it's a combination of exposed structure above, along with uh, some really nice insertions of the rooms and soffited areas. And uh, in view number four, you can see we have some really nice windows that will look out uh, outside toward Madrone. And uh, there's uh, the offices are, um, we, we try to design the office areas so that they feel open. And so there's a lot of glass used in the, uh, the office areas. Uh, the private offices have uh, glazed fronts so that there's a lot of light shared into the open office area. And uh, and I think the only other image is the aerial. And if we can bring that up, uh, that gives you a really nice view of how. Uh, David, I don't think I have that one, but you have the okay. ability to share if you have it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Share screen. All right. I think I got it here. There we go. Are you seeing that? So, yes. uh, yeah, so uh, when all is, uh, you know, this is a, an artist rendering uh, that was done, uh, uh, let's see, right at the end of, this is January 2020. So this is a depic depiction with, you know, mature landscaping and how the, the building addresses the Madrone um, turn in the road there. Um, you can s I think it, this is a really good view where you see how the materials all work together. The, the glazed um, front corner that addresses the, the road and the, the arch uh, with the carpenter's uh, signage. And um, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're really uh, excited about the project. And um, I think we're about two to three months out from uh, completion. So uh, construction has gone um, really well, even through uh, the, the pandemic, uh, this project was able to get started and really hasn't suffered from any kind of delays related to the pandemic. And so, uh, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed that uh, you know we'll get we'll we'll get the rest of these uh, couple more months um, of work completed without any incidents and uh, be able to uh, transfer the operation from the uh, the old training center and move into the new training center and start start uh, teaching the apprentices and uh, aside from the apprentices um, this is also a a continuing education uh, center for journeymen. So um, they, uh, journeymen, also have to uh, make updates to their, their education and updates and training. And so uh, this serves both apprentices and journeymen. And uh, uh, I, I or uh, Tracy can uh, uh, answer any questions you might have. Okay, so do we have any questions for David and Tracy? I can't see everybody, so. Uh, I see a hand raised by Nick. Okay, Nick. 
Nick, you're on mute, I think. There we go. I'm sorry. Right. Guys. Having a having a little bit of problems with the technology this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Tracy, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It really it looks like a, a fabulous facility, and I love the uh, the combination of really of applied training uh, with uh, with both the teaching and, and the workshops. Just a quick question, and it may be a naive question I, I, uh, at some level, but I'm wondering if. Are there are any opportunities or have you guys thought about potentially with some of the applied training to actually connect, say, with the city for some beautification projects with the apprentices and, and, and the journeymen? So I'm, I'm just thinking through the sequence of, you know, didactic training, shop, obviously applied shop uh, uh, presence within uh, within the facility. But I'm wondering if there are there any initiatives that could be coming down the road that this team could be working, say, with the city as relates to beautification, et cetera, because it seems like it's a nice alignment with with the work that's being done so it's just a thought uh, listening to your presentation um you know that that's an interesting idea i i i haven't heard anything to yeah. that effect um but uh you know, tracy might know some things uh, she's in more contact with um with the management of the carpenters than i am um uh, Tracy, did you know of anything like that? I have, not, I have not heard of anything, but they work in concert with the Los Rios Community College District. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I know there's some type of integration um, to provide and work with the community. Yeah. yeah, and I think with the Los Rios, uh, the way the program is set up that there are there's the capability of earning, um, you know, college credits, um, you know, depending on the program that that, that yeah. one is enrolled in. Yeah, I guess what I'm thinking through, uh, guys, is, is uh, similar to the model that the Leadership Morgan Hill team does every year, where they provide, obviously, an initiative for this for those students at this point. But it just seems like it's, it's an opportunity, right, uh, for some greater synergies. And, and I guess I would just offer that as, as a consideration going forward. I'll reach out to the uh, the training program and mm -hmm. let them know that they should maybe touch base and coordinate if they can. Great. David, would you mind stopping the screen share so we could see everybody? We can sure. see. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Just a, Thank you. Give me just one, okay, so there it is. And it looks like Mr. Batonda. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Maybe. All right, Thank you. Steve has his hand right. raised, so Steve? Oh, thank you. I just wanted to find out if you're, uh, David, you and Tracy will be able to stay on the entire uh, meeting because I, I wanted to talk about our, actually our uh, the enhancements in our uh, wood shop and, and the person that is leading that up and actually show you a couple uh, photographs that I could bring up. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can stay on. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Brittany. All right. Uh, my question is, how many classes are you anticipating hosting and then how many people per class? Um, the schedule is uh, <clears throat> uh, classes happen uh, Monday through Thursday and it's a 10 hour day. And um, that day is is basically broken up into a, a morning session and a um, an eve, uh, afternoon session. The morning is usually spent in the classroom um, where teachers are able to, uh, it's basically kind of a, a lecture environment where they, you know, they're talking about the topic at hand. And then in the afternoon, they go into the shop where they're able to to work with the tools and the material uh, hands-on. And so um, that at full, I, I have my notes here from uh, when we we're going through planning. So uh, bear with me just a moment. Um, so there's the, the Monday through Thursday and there, there is occasional um, Saturday sessions with uh, journeymen. And so those are day, you know, throughout the day on Saturday. And uh, at full capacity, uh, they anticipate uh, 12 to 15 employees. And those are administrative staff and teachers. 
and a daily student volume of between 120 and 150 students. And that's from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and it's a, a four days, Monday through Thursday, a 10 hour schedule. And uh, the evening and Saturday classes are smaller groups up to 25 people. And, uh, and that, that was used to, in our, uh, <laughs> to, to get through all the, the traffic uh, study uh, uh, information that was necessary for entitlements. So uh, all of the operational uh, uh, information regarding the facility uh, that information was used for uh, determining traffic counts and parking. How, how long are the courses, David? Is it like a six month course, a three? Uh, the, the training is set up in quarters. And so if, if you're an apprentice, you'll spend one week each quarter of the year at the training center. So during the year, you'll get four weeks of training at the training center. So, uh, you know, uh, we're in the second quarter, you'd spend a week uh, that Monday through Thursday uh, at the training center. And uh, there's a variety of courses. So there's, there's a, a syllabus that they work their way through the different topics. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mayor Pro Tem, John McKay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I may have dropped in just a touch late. Um, you answered some of my questions. One of them, I guess, would be um, with that, with you know, up to 130, 140 people on site, um, I guess, on any given day. Um, are there dining facilities? Is there a cafeteria inside the building? Or would we expect uh, most of the staff and students to be going out to the businesses for lunch or, you know, what? Uh, what what are they gonna do during the day? Right, um, there is a, a, there's two break rooms, uh, one for students and one for administration and staff. Um, I believe the way most carpenter training, uh, they, they usually bring their own lunch, um, but I'm sure if they have an hour break between uh, the morning session and the afternoon session, there may be, you know, there may be times where they want to, uh, you know, go to uh, a, a sandwich shop or, or something nearby. Um, but there are uh, vending machines in the, the student break room um, to help supplement, you know, that there's some choices there, but it, there's not like there's a kitchen or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, but so they do have a, a nice break area in okay. order to uh, take a break between the two sessions. So there might be a nice uh, table or a bulletin board where we could put some of our nice eateries information out for uh, the students and staff? Uh, I'm, yes, I'm sure there will be. <laughs> that, would, yeah. that, would warm, that would warm my heart. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and, and even in the lobby, there, there's still, there will probably be uh, informational uh, uh, boards about, you know, where people can post and, uh, you know, convey information about nearby businesses. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Always want to make sure people know what we're doing in Morgan Hill. Um, yeah. My last question really piggybacks on one that Nick uh, asked, and that is, um, we have a couple of pretty cool opportunities for projects in Morgan Hill, one very close, uh, maybe a nice sign at the um, the end of the Coyote Creek Trail announcing you're in Morgan Hill, we could sure use that. Um, so if anybody can, uh, from the Carpenters Union can get a hold of uh, me or Nick or somebody, I'd love to uh, promote some ideas. That's it, thank you very much. All right, well, thank you, John. Thank you, John and Larry. Yeah, thank you. Um, how long has uh, the Carpenters had a training facility in Morgan Hill? We've been operating there since 1997. Okay. 
And is the need for an expanded facility and um, indication of construction trends in Northern California? Over the last few years, they've been very busy and enrollment has definitely increased across all 46 counties. Uh, they, have, they currently have four training facilities in Northern California. Um, we enlarged the Pleasanton facility. We doubled the size of the facility in uh, Fairfield. And then this one is significantly larger than their existing space over on Woodview. So, so you all anticipate that trend to continue and you know, uh, more people coming through the training program, joining the trades? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, John Lang. I just wanted to make two real quick comments um, on things David touched on. One was um, in the new facility, it certainly gives them much more yard space and outdoor space to, to do piloting kinds of things. And I know that was a big need of why they're transitioning from the existing building to the new built space, um, just to re really reinforce that. Two, um, wanted to comment on the other property they were interested in and just for the group uh, to be mindful of is um, we do have vacant land in, in Morgan Hill, um, but as we continue to absorb that land, there are properties that do have remediation issues. Now, could the Carpenters Union have gone through more remediation on that site? Sure, um, but it's a lot of money. Um, so as there are going to be properties that will be on the market a very long time because of those remediation issues. Um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, we went a long, very long ways with the group um, before they decided to move away from that site. So just be mindful of not all vacant land is trade, uh, created equal. Um, there are some challenges um, with sites. Um, and as we build out further in our community, we're going to be left with those more challenging sites. Um, this was one, there are a few others in our community. So um, people may look like, like this is a great place to build. Well, it is, but it's going to be much more costly. So just to remind the group um, about that particular point, not to take away anything that they're doing, um, but just to build on that point. Thank you. Yeah. And I would just add that uh, uh, the carpenters gave great consideration and uh, uh, analysis before finally moving away from that initial site that uh, you know, an extensive cost analysis was done. And uh, after that was completed, they, they made a decision to you know, look for another site. Okay, thank you, John. And Alex, you have your hand raised. I do, and I apologize for being fashionably late. So this question may have, may have been addressed, but what is the main source or the main sources of your participants? Are they out of the high school? Are they um, population at large? And if so, what demographic? Um, I think it ranges. Um, you know, I know uh, having gone through the entitlements, there's uh, a major emphasis on uh, uh, in uh, recruiting veteran uh, participation, you know, uh, military service men and women coming uh, out of the service. Uh, I believe that they have uh, programs aligned to uh, help those uh, members of our society uh, get the training that they need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, be able to integrate back into you know, civilian life. Um, but uh, I think you see, you know, certainly there'll be uh, high school educated uh, uh, apprentices and, um, uh, you know, even more educated uh, students also. Um, and there's also the, the journeyman program where there's, uh, the, the continuing education of both apprentices and journeymen. Um, and one of the, I, I, would, I would point out that, you know, in this facility, we have a, a 20 booth welding facility. And in all of the facilities that we, we do for the carpenters, there's always a welding component. And um, even in the other trades, 
that we do training centers for, there's always uh, there always seems to be a, a welding or a brazing component to the trade, and um, so welding is um, is uh, a big component of of all training that happens, and there's there's many different certificates uh, that uh, uh, apprentices and journeymen can pursue in in the welding field, and uh, so uh, I think there's a, a, you know, the demographic is probably kind of across the board in terms of age and uh, the catch basin for this facility, um, you know, it's at least a 50 mile to 60 mile radius. Yeah, that's quite a bit, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, and John, you must, you have your hand raised again. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I'm, I don't. I guess I'm taking a second bite at the apple. So, <laughs> the apple here. So my question um, is, how does one get into the apprenticeship program? Um, can you just walk up and register, or do you have to be hired and then sent through uh, an employer that's a member of the union? The reason I ask is we have a vocational vocational services program at Rotary, and wondering if maybe this could be one of the programs we look at servicing. Um, Tracy, can you help with that question? Um, I believe there's two different ways. There's a, they currently, currently run a pre-apprenticeship program. It sort of gets, I know that they reach out to high schools. Um, you need to either have a high school diploma or a GED. And it's an eight week program that sort of acclimates you to what, what can you expect to be a carpenter? So it teaches them to be on time, have you, be responsible for your tools, all of those type of items. And that runs eight weeks. Um, you can be employed um, and get on the list that way, or you can just do a walk up and sign up. Um, I actually have a, a friend whose son has joined the list for the pre-apprenticeship program. He just graduated from high school. So he's just waiting to get called up. So we're all excited as soon as we get through all of this COVID and we can get back to a regular schedule, they'll be able to start up that pre-apprenticeship program full time. Okay, well, that sounds wonderful. I'll uh, let everybody know. And um, how deep is, uh, is there anybody sitting on the bench these days or is or everybody just scrambling for uh, labor? Uh, my understanding is they're, everybody's pretty busy. Mm. I don't think there's a big wait list anywhere. Thank you. Yeah, we're running a project next door and a lot of the subs are very busy and it's hard to get them scheduled, definitely. Um, well, thank you very much, both uh, David and Tracy for that presentation. Welcome. Uh, next, we're gonna go